The 62nd annual New York Life ACC Tournament Greensboro Coliseum has 23,500 seats and every single one of them has somebody in it. This place is packed for Notre Dame and North Carolina. Come on inside, everybody. Mike Chaminsky, Tim Brandt, glad to have you along for the championship game. Mike, when you look at this, these are two teams, both of them offensive-minded, both average about 78 points a game. They like to go at it. Yeah, it's, it, they, but they're built a little differently, Tim, that Notre Dame really prefers the three-point shot and very proficient there. For North Carolina, they work inside the three-point line, and they really pound the offensive glass. You say three-point shots, you're talking about Pat Connaughton, and that's the four man's going to have to jump out on him and stay with him some way. Yeah, you're going to have to stay connected with him, and uh, he's kind of an X-factor with them. Had four threes in the game at Chapel Hill, and uh... so we're just about set here. Johnson, of course, for Carolina, is a big-time player. He's come into his own here in the ACC tournament. No, oh, he's he, he really is a barometer, I think, for them, and uh, Roy Williams tries to fire him up for every game. Let's meet the starting lineup for North Carolina. At forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. Number three, Kennedy Meeks. At guard, a 6'1 junior from Marion, Iowa. Number five, Marcus Page. At forward, a 6'9 junior from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Number 11, Bryce Johnson. At forward, a 6'6 junior from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. Number 13, J.P. Tokido. And at forward, a 6'8 freshman from Tumbo, Texas. Number 44, Justin Jackson. The head coach of the Tar Heels is Roy Williams. Massachusetts. Number 24, Pat Connaughton. At forward, a 16 junior from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Number 30, Zach August. And at guard, a 6'5 sophomore from Medford, New Jersey. Number 32, Steve Basteria. The head coach of the Irish is Mike Bray. Those were the starting lineups brought to you by Food Lion. Mike, when you look at these two teams as we get closer now, we talked about the three-point shot of Notre Dame. Offensive rebounding a key as well. Yeah, you look at both of these clubs, and they've got, uh, they had issues in that first game. And uh, take a look at the uh, four keys. And uh, for, for Notre Dame, it's going to be keeping the uh, Tar Heels off the offensive glass. And uh, for North Carolina, first of all, they've got, a, they've got a guard to three. Ten threes in that first game for Notre Dame. Defensive rebounding, 21 offensive rebounds for 21 points for the Tar Heels. All right, partner, let's go over to Debbie Antonelli. She's been talking about Justin Jackson. I know you guys have been talking about the way Notre Dame shoots the three, but maybe North Carolina has found a new weapon in Justin Jackson. He's six for nine in the ACC tournament outside the arc. I watched every one of his three-point makes.
Brooks this season on Synergy. 17 times it's on a skip pass. Does he make a three? Three times off a screen, three times in transition. All of them are catch and shoot. He doesn't put the ball on the ground. That means Notre Dame's going to run at him, try to make him run off the three-point line. You know, Deb, the thing is that people perceive North Carolina can't shoot the three. They're third in percentage in the conference. They just don't take a lot of them. But in this in this tournament so far, they've been making enough of them to keep pace with the other team. Mike, you are so right. Debbie's talking about Justin Jackson. He had a career high 22 points last night against Virginia and was eight for 10 from the field. We're set to go. Brian Kersey, Mike Eads, Brian Dorsey, the officials for this championship game, and they are the best in the country. Ryan Kersey throws it up, and he'll have to redo that. Well, it is a huge honor to referee and to be chosen for this assignment. John Clockerty does a great job with the refs all year long, and he graded these three out as meriting to be in this game. Tar Heels have it first. Page gives it back to Meeks. His jumper is short. That'll get Jaron Grant running. He'll take it right at the basket, and he's fouled. This foul will be on Justin Jackson. That's uh, to get him in foul trouble early would be a huge lift for Notre Dame. But, Tim, you look at Jaron Grant in this tournament, not shooting the ball well, 6 of 17 from the floor, but he is getting to the free throw line. Perfect 13 to 13. Makes the first, and the Irish are on the board. He's a 77% free throw shooter. Mike, we talked about this a lot, but Mike Gray says he thinks it's critical. His club gets off to a good start. Yeah, and it's uh, and, the, and you don't want to you want to defend without fouling this Irish team. They are 73 percent as a group, which is outstanding. So the Tar Heels have their second possession and dribbled out of bounds by Justin Jackson. So the freshman a little bit shaky here early on. Well, let's just keep an eye on North Carolina over these 40 minutes. This is where the double bye might come into play heavily tonight. This is their fourth game in four nights. Notre Dame just their third and three. Grant, it'll be Notre Dame basketball. Are those nerves, though, Mike? We're, we're watching a freshman. He's already got one foul, one turnover, and uh, looks a little shaky. Well, this, this is a different deal. I don't care what you say, you know, up the, the first few rounds, but when you're in an ACC tournament final, there's a different feel in the air. Good movement by the Irish. August, drop step. Can't get it to go down. Late double team from Tokato that time. August had a very good game in Chapel Hill. 18 points. There's Bruce Bryce Johnson, and Bryce Johnson has the Tar Heels on the board. We're tied at two. Well, you talked about a fast start for Notre Dame. I think it's uh, good that uh, Bryce Johnson has a fast start. He's, he's been slow to work in the games. Roy Williams has had to fire him up sometime. He had nine points against Notre Dame when these two teams met in January. This is Connaughton's first touch. And he's fouled. And the foul is on Bryce Johnson. Well, this is going to be an interesting matchup to see who can win what. Connaughton playing three-quarter that time. is a beautiful lob over the top. But on this end, Tim, Connaughton's going to take Bryce Johnson out on the perimeter, shoot the three, or try to drive him. Vastoria from beyond the arc. The Irish 0 for 1 from the bonus sphere. Tokido dinged up in this game, a bruised orbital. Jackson shot rimmed around and came back out. Both teams getting acclimated. Take a look at our Ruby Tuesday game menu in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, the big difference is the, the turnover margin. I mean, Notre Dame really takes care of the ball. North Carolina can be a little loose with it at times. The assists, very good job by North Carolina. Nice pass to August. Yeah, it's going to be critical, like I said. He's got confidence against this team, but it's going to be critical for him to stay out of foul trouble. Loose ball. Jackson, August, alley-oop too high. You got to make the easy pass that time, and you have to make a bounce pass. That lob way over his head. Jackson gets up a little gimpy, but he goes over to August, says, my bad, man, I'm sorry, bad pass. Joel James comes into the ball game now for North Carolina. He is a big one. Not 
Washington helps out. And we're tied at four. Well, Jackson's got the length against just about anybody who's going to be guarding him for North Carolina to elevate over them and get a jump shot. Both teams now settling into the ball game. Pace is changing a little bit. Just underway at the Greensboro Coliseum. Jaron Grant. Drop pass to August. Kick it out to Connaughton. Back to Jackson. Well, I really surprised Connaughton passed that up. He had a terrific look first. Page. Yes, sir. Brian Corey talked about the plantar fasciitis, and uh, that is really going to show up in the fourth game in four nights. And it usually takes him about four or five minutes to get those feet warmed up, but he's gotten off to a quick start. Marcus Page, 6'1 junior from Iowa. He drives the train. He is the floor leader. Connaughton with a tough shot, banks it in. Boy, he has been very aggressive driving the ball right at Bryce Johnson, trying to get him in some foul trouble. Toka toe from long range. He rips forward from way outside, and it's 9-6, to six, North Carolina. Tim, I don't think the 35-second clock is going to be in jeopardy of going down in this game, and uh, <laughs> both teams willing to play at pace. Nice catch. Thank you. I almost shot it. <laughs> I would have blocked it. <laughs> Thanks, partner. <laughs> Thought we were teammates. Jaron Grant, they double him. He gets trapped. Jump ball, possession arrow belong to the Irish. 15-58 to play in the first half. The ACC championship game. 9-6, Carolina. Come on back inside, everybody. The 2015 New York Life ACC tournament just underway. Like four minutes, Mike, and already we've had three ties and a lead change. Oh, very good, very well played game. Uh, North Carolina getting out of the game quickly, four of six, and they've got the game's only three. Knocked out of bounds by Carolina. Tar Heels playing very aggressively on defense. A look at Mike Gray's led Notre Dame to 13 wins in the ACC regular season. Great tournament run. Coaching staff said that in that loss, North Carolina did not play the ball screens very well, and it's going to be a big key for Joel James to get out and help him at. Long rebound taken by Page. Jump out on Page. Jackson underneath. Hicks couldn't get it. He got close. Well, that was a beautiful play by Jackson. They really jumped him hard. Vastoria, left side, too strong. Drops it to Hicks again, and he doesn't miss this time. Yeah, second of close opportunity in transition, setting a screen for Page would set that play up. How about the move by Grant? Right down Main Street. He's got four points. That's exactly what North Carolina likes to do, run it up your back after a made basket. Grant, I think, really looking to be aggressive early in this game, going to the rim. Look at the board power by the Tar Heels. It's Hicks again. You know, Hicks has been a little quiet in this tournament, and uh, but the championship game always seems to have a surprise guy who steps up and plays well. Grant looked at August on the roll. That closed in a hurry. He feels like he can take James, but they double him. No whistle. Connaughton for three. Splash! Yeah, how often do you see that on an offensive rebound? You get the defense a little scrambled, and Connaughton got a great look. Two-point ball game. Jackson, tough shot on the baseline. 
Jackson comes away with it. And Demetrius Jackson will pull it back out. Good transition defense by the Tar Heels getting back. Taken away by Tokito, and they're going to call a foul on Jaron Grant. Well, here again, you see this uh, little, little brush screen in transition. Freeze Isaiah Hicks up. And then down the other end, Jaron Grant has been aggressive right from the start of this game. And Hicks again, the offensive rebound. That was a big uh, that was a big part of that game during the regular season. And we talked about Connaughton stepping up, and that's exactly on that shot chart, one of his favorite spots there and at the top of the key. Better than 40% off that right shoulder. Carolina by two. Zone now 2-3 for uh, the Irish. Fonzie Colson into the game, such a big part of yesterday's win. Bryce Johnson banks it in. He has four points. Second time now they've thrown over the top for Johnson for the catch and score. No real, real post presence right now for the Irish. They've got an open floor, driving lanes wide open. Irish try to spread them. Connaughton goes in, now steps back. That's for two. Well, I think you'd rather make him a two-point shooter than a three-point shooter. He wanted to try to drive Johnson again, but he stayed in front of him. One possession game. Meeks banks it in. He right. battled Colson all the way to the backboard. Both teams go into their strengths right now, and North Carolina is just pounding the inside. You see 10 to 4 at advantage points in the paint early. Vastoria from long range. Carolina just dominating the boards. Underneath the Meeks. only a few seconds to get under the 12 minute mark but Mike Gray sees this game getting out of hand a little bit they may have to change up their strategy they've been fronting the post down low and North Carolina has been very successful throwing over the top good job by Meeks giving himself enough room to catch the ball Monzi Colson just got lost let's go over to Debbie well, guys, one of the things that Coach Bray talked about before the game was multiple defensive looks for North Carolina to try to disrupt their rhythm. We've seen two possessions of zone, and as you said, G-Man, they're throwing over the top. They're two for two against the two possessions of zone. North Carolina is on the offensive end. Notre Dame beat North Carolina 71-70 to in the regular season. That was back in January. Notre Dame is guard-driven. UNC, as you've already seen, a club led by its forwards with Paige the guard. And the irony of that game was that uh, the winning basket was with a minute left, and it was an offensive rebound by Zach August. Grant takes it right at the basket. Well, he, is, he has gotten to his right hand whenever he wants to. Six, like six of their last ten field goals in the paint. Tokito looks inside. They close that door. Connaughton takes it away. Wow, well, they were trying to get it to Meeks. He instead of pick and roll up top and rolled into the lane, but a beautiful interception. Connaughton from way outside. Bottoms. Well, that's a bad sign for, for North Carolina. Connaughton already in double figures, Mike. One point game. This is Jackson with the steal. And the Irish lead. You gotta watch out for those lazy cross court passes. Demetrius Jackson just really anticipated that well and shot the gap. Page got caught in the air. Looks again and fires. Underneath to August. This is for three. Beecham was too hard. Connaughton gets it back. Well, North Carolina's perimeter players, you have to understand, with long, you're going to have long rebounds on those threes. They've got to hang in there. That one just went over all the front court players. 
Interesting that they've gone to B.J. Beecham. Notre Dame has another 6'8 player to try to stop the onslaught of the rebounds. Connaughton is fouled. Second foul on Bryce Johnson. How about the steal by Jackson? 10:09 to play in the first half. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Notre Dame with a one-point lead, and Tim uh, Pat Connaughton has gotten off quickly. He has half of their points, and he is perfect from the floor. He's doing it in a number of ways. The nice drive into the lane. He's knocked down a couple of threes, and the mid-range jump shot there. Four of four from the field, two of two from behind the arc. He's got a chance to add to it at the line. It's a 7-0 run by the Irish over the last 147. Since that timeout, they also had the steal. Jonathan makes the first. And, uh, don't be surprised if you see him on the Orioles pitching staff at some point in time. A fourth round draft choice there. Played ball this summer in their A-League team but by Aberdeen. Pitcher can really bring it. He's got, a, got the heater in the mid-90s. Break that thing off the table, too. He's a good one. I'm not sure I'd give up the round ball. You'd shoot like that. Well, joining another, uh, an ex-Notre uh, Dame football player in Samarja is uh, pitching in the majors. He sure is. Here's Page. Takes it right down to the baseline. Has it blocked. That'll get the Irish running again. Notre Dame right, really just kind of playing free and easy right now. Trying to set up Connaughton. They think he can take Page. He's yeah. got a little bit of a side advantage. Uh, Marcus Page, a nice job battling the post guards. Usually don't like to defend down there. He got help. Long range by Jaron Grant. Grant with nine points and four assists. Three of eight. Almost half of their field goal attempts in this game have been from behind the arc. Johnson's shot won't go, but the follow by Meeks is good. To this holding to form, as we talked about in the keys, uh, both teams kind of playing to their strengths. Grant kicks it out. This is Vastoria. How about that? Wide open look. I mean, there wasn't insane anybody in the same zip code. You see the three-point shooting, four of nine, a one for three. You said they needed to make ten or more. They're off to a good start. Yeah, what a great dish. Drive, draw, dish, and there was Johnson. Well, yeah, Bryce Johnson off to a great start. That's what happens when you double team. He was late back in rotation, very able to get into the lane, and that's where the defense broke down. Carolina fans come to their feet. They know defense will be a key against the Irish. Beecham has it taken away. And Page is fouled. That's going to be on Jaron Grant. That's two. That's two on Grant. Oh, that is big. Jaron Grant's got two. The stage is set for the final act of the 62nd annual New York Life ACC Tournament. North Carolina needs to balance that with points in the paint, and that's exactly what they've done here in the first half. They've looked to go on the inside. Bryce Johnson's been effective on the interior. Eight of their 12 field goal attempts are inside the paint around the rim. They've got five second chance points to balance what Notre Dame has outside the arc, which they've got 12 points. Nice put back by Hicks. They He's just, got six points already. They just added to that. And uh, Deb, I just talked about the way that that's how they are uh, they are built. 65% of their offense comes inside the arc. That's number one in the conference. Well, how about this? Notre Dame, four for four at the line. Carolina yet to score at the line. Well, that's where that's where Notre Dame has offset them and built a little bit of a lead from the three-point line and the free-throw line. That and the threes. Foul is on Meeks. Grant makes the first. Closed captioning for ACC basketball is brought to you by 
Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time. Notre Dame has also made four threes. North Carolina only one, so that's a 12 to three advantage right there. This is Nate Britt. He's been getting a lot of time in this tournament, and he's played well. Shot clock is down to 10. Into the corner, wide open. And again, the put back by Meeks. What Notre Dame, even though they're smaller, they've got to block out North Carolina farther away from the basket. They're getting pushed underneath the rim. Remember, Jaron Grant has two personal fouls. Jackson down the lane, kicks it out. This is going to be offensive on Jackson. Boy, so far, Isaiah Hicks has come in and had an impact on this game on both ends of the floor. Six points, a couple of rebounds, efficient shooting at three of five, and he takes the charge there. Both teams playing at a very high level to start this championship game. Well, the, the thing where that this fourth game is going to catch up with North Carolina, if it does, is going to be in the second half. Here's Jackson goes into Meeks. He's had the advantage on August. Drop steps into him, and this time August gets the win. No double team help either that time. Just good one-on-one -on -one defense. And August beat him back down court. Here's Grant. Out to Vestoria. Brent, stop, pop, no good. And another rebound by August. Uh, Mike Bray says, let's uh, put our foot on the brake here a little bit. This has been a really well-paced game up and down the floor, but North Carolina wants that. They lead the conference in tempo and possessions. Notre Dame ninth. How about the drive by August in the foul? Called out on Meeks. That's his second. Yeah, and it's just, uh, you know, that time Nate Britt, a little wave at the ball right there. He could have stepped in and taken the charge. Now, August is not that good of a free throw shooter, 62%. He thought they were in real trouble last night, Tim, when he fouled out of the game with about three minutes to go against Duke. But uh, Bonzi Colson was in good position for as far as fouls were concerned and really did an admirable job against uh, Jalil Okafor late in that game. Bonzi Colson had a great game last night, really helped. They exposed the Oka for a little bit last night, too, at the foul line. Well, that's just the one chink in the armor, about 57, 55 percent for him in the year. That foul's going to be on the best story, I believe. Today's coverage of ACC basketball being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the nearly one million men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. So proud to have you with us and hope you're enjoying the broadcast. All right, Tim, Justin Jackson was so good yesterday against Virginia. 22 points, 8 of 10 shooting. A little slow to start in here. Some nerves early on. And uh, got, really got bailed out by the story on that, uh, on that jump shot. Jackson's a 71% free throw shooter. He only had six points against Notre Dame in January. Got half of that now already. He's really improved. He came on really strong at the end of the year. I think he's going to blossom into an elite scorer in next year. Carolina's reeled him back in. Bonzi Colson, nowhere to go. Mike Gray playing both of them together so they can have a little bit of presence on the glass. Shot clock is at eight. Kick it out. That's going to be against Grant, isn't it? 
That's three. They call that on Grant. That's three on Jaron Grant. He's going to have to go to the bench. Well, and um, Mike Bray, is, uh, the, the assistant coaches are surrounding him. And on the pass, he looked like he was in position and stationary. That is huge. Grant's still out on the floor. They're trying to, they couldn't get him out of that possession. He's got to be really careful now. Justin Jackson throws it away. Five turnovers now for the Tar Heels. Well, Mike Bray was incensed after this call. See the emotion and the intensity of an ACC tournament final. Absolutely. Mike knew coming in that majority of fans here tonight were going to be from Carolina right down the road. Jackson. Bonzi Colson. After that quick start, they've gone away from Connaughton. Hadn't heard from him in a while. One possession game. Tokito. That was off the Astoria. 350 remaining in the first half of the championship game in Greensboro. It's a good one. 31 28. Notre Dame. Carolina is the number five seed. It's only happened three times. The first time the number five seed made it to the ACC championship game, 1978. The star of that game, my partner, Mike Jaminski, one of three Duke Blue Devils with more than 20 points. Duke won that game, 86-77, to win its first title in 12 years. Nice post feed that time. Bryce Johnson coming up big. Good uh, execution out of the timeout. Those were good times, Tim. I tell you, it, the Coach Foster got up to the lectern afterwards and said it. People said it would snow in Greensboro before he won a championship, and there was a blizzard that day. <laughs> <laughs> like the song says, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> Carolina's got numbers, but instead, Tokido brings it back out. Boy, Jackson looked at it, almost pulled the trigger. Page does. Hey. Johnson battling three Irish. Beecham comes back in. Colson goes out for Notre Dame. James goes out for Notre Dame. And in comes Isaiah Hicks. Well, the big difference with the number five seed in this format is that extra day. That didn't, uh, everybody played the same number of games back then. Turnover for the Tar Heels. That's turnover number six. This is big with Jaron Grant, three personal fouls. Let's see how long he has to sit. Mike Gray on his bench, only 21% of the minutes. That's one of the lowest in the country, so their bench is very short. And especially losing one of their leading scorers in this game. Nice pass to Vestoria. Couldn't hang on. 50-50 ball. Still loose. Irish come away with it. And the foul, I believe, will be on Tokito. Yep. Corrects him. It'll be Marcus Page, his first. Well, sometimes the ball has a mind of its own, and it looked like it did on this possession, but you got to give credit everybody getting on the floor. Notre Dame able to come up with it. How about Connaughton finding August from the seat of his pants? North Carolina, six team fouls. Notre Dame, five, so nobody in the penalty yet. Two and a half minutes to play in the first half. ACC championship game in Greensboro. Connaughton too strong. Page for three. Nice fight for that rebound by August. 
North Carolina now one of seven from three. August battling on both ends. Under two minutes we go in the first half. I'm going to be curious to see if in the start of the second half if, if they come out and start Jaron Grant and let him play with those three fouls. Basturia. Bucket will count. He'll go to the line for one more. This, is, this has been consistent. It is a great curl around the screen, something they do and practice very well. Foul was on Isaiah Hicks. Vastoria at the line. Line with uh, with Grant out, more shots available for Jackson Vastoria. The guys on the floor. He's the best free throw shooter on the Irish team. As you look at Jaron Grant, he'll now become a cheerleader. Telling you, Mike, that is one of the prettiest jump hooks. Bryce Johnson did that all day long against Virginia. I'll tell you what, for a right-hander, that is a very tough shot along the baseline on that right block. You, most right-handers like to come into the middle from the other side. Down to August. Off the rim, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. There you see, and he's, you know, you got Connaughton, there's that big size advantage, and he's used it well, used his body well, a good post feed right there. But the, none of the traditional centers that North Carolina has are out on the floor right now, so it's a little bit of a smaller team. August able to work inside on Simmons. August has been the most improved player on this Notre Dame team this year. 18 points against North Carolina when they played January 5th, and he makes them both. Notre Dame pushes the lead back to four. You see the three-point line and the free-throw line treating Notre Dame very well. And again, North Carolina comes up empty. As opposed to a team like a Virginia, uh, this is this this lead is nothing right now. Tokido takes it away. What a great feed to Jackson. Yeah, if you're Mike Bray, not happy with that. So you, you don't want to give up an easy basket turnover that turns into points at the end of the end of the half to give them some momentum. Final 30 seconds of the first half. There's a two-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Just under two seconds. Shot clock down to nine. Jackson looks up at it and goes. It's good if he goes. Best story for three at the shot clock. What a terrific find by a Demetrius Jackson on that drive. He got a little pick and roll up top. Look at all those bodies he has to see through. And a wide open look for Vestoria. Only the second year in the ACC. The first time in the ACC title. And they leave it to half. 39-34. A look back through the window of time, 1957. Lenny Rosenbluth and the Carolina team undefeated that year. Well, that's so long ago, I wasn't even thought about yet at that point in time. But a great team went undefeated, went on to win the national championship against Will Chamberlain's Kansas team. Uh, great, great uh, group of guys. Mike, this game here, Carolina. Well, let's say this. Notre Dame has outscored Carolina 10-1 to 1 at the free throw line, 15-3 to 3 from beyond New York, and yet it's only a five-point ball game. Yeah, and it's, you know, for North Carolina, they've done what they do well. They go one side. They're 24-10 to 10 plus on the uh, points in the paint. So, uh, just, you know, if they can make a couple sure. of more threes and get to the free throw line a little more often in the second half. Jaron Grant with three personal fouls. That's going to be like an anchor at Notre Dame. Let's go across the court to Debbie with the very latest. 
Well, I spoke to Coach Bray on the way out. He said, we might have to score 80 points, and he's okay with that. He likes the rhythm of his offense. He believes his guards are going to have to help on the glass a little bit here in the second half. For Roy Williams in North Carolina, every single one of the three-point baskets that Notre Dame made was off a of dribble penetration. They've got to do a better job of protecting inside out, and they've got to get to the free throw line. They have to be on attack mode here in the second half. All right, Debbie, thank you very much. Should be a terrific second half of play in this 62nd annual championship game. Look at the shot selection, Mike. Yeah, you see it. It's all the 12, uh, 12 shots or 18 shots in the paint, only seven mid-range, and then just the opposite for uh, for Notre Dame. And, you know, Jaron Grant's in this game, and he's got to be careful, Tim, not only on the defensive side, but on the offensive side as well. That third foul, as Corey was talking about, picked up going in the lane. Tokyo -to takes it right at the basket and scores. Uh, August almost picked off his own man in Vastoria. Makes it a one possession game. Mike, I think Jerry Grant only knows one way to play. Uh, he, that's all well and good, but you got to stay on the floor, too. I hear you. See, he's got to pull up and shoot floaters, and Jackson didn't know who that was for. He thought it was another shooter over there. Ray telling those guys to just calm down a little bit. 19 minutes, yeah, they're gonna 25 go, seconds they're to gonna, play. They're going to go zone to try to hide Grant a little bit and buy him some time. Smart play, I think. One to his own. They don't play it that often. Kick it out to Page. He looks from beyond New York. Well, you know, he sees his, his mentor, Mike Krzyzewski, go zone, so he feels like it's, <laughs> it's like the stamp of approval. So, why two unforced errors early for Notre Dame and they usually take very care of, good care of the basketball Mike Bray doesn't like that you're going to need every possession at least getting some shots that's nine turnovers now for the Irish nice job by Connaughton Carolina gives it right back this is beyond the arc and August is fouled by Meeks. You know, it's ironic in that game in Chapel Hill that uh, Notre Dame only got six offensive rebounds, but the last one was by August for a putback with the one-minute mark that proved to be the winning basket. Absolutely. Good call. That is three personals now on Meeks. Carolina played the last little stretch there without Meeks in the regular season. He had a little illness, did not practice Monday or Tuesday. Did play in the second game. And got the start here tonight. Grant fading away, too strong. He is so smooth inside. Bryce Johnson now has 12 points, and he's doing it with ease. You know, normally on that jump hook, you want to get it closer to the basket, but he is comfortable from about 12 feet on that shot. Same side of the floor down this end. Carolina crowd lets him know how they like it. Grant takes it at the basket too strong. Oh, yeah, upset with himself. That was a very makeable shot. This is for three. And August lost it out of bounds. Wait, are, you, are you wearing green today? I mean, this is almost the second ball you've caught. That pass was a little wide. One point game. Irish lead, Tar Heels. This North Carolina team, I think, exceeded expectations at times this year. They had so much adversity. They come in as the number five seed, ranked 19th in the country, and a win here and a championship in the Atlantic Coast Conference. I think could move them up a spot or two tomorrow on Selection Sunday. If, if, if they win, if, uh, if North Carolina wins, could they get up to a three seed? They're a five seed right now. It's going to be interesting to see, too, what they do with the number one seeds. And I'm talking about Duke and Virginia, who came in here thinking they were number one seeds. I think Virginia's off the line. I think Wisconsin, with that win today, moves up, and they move off. And uh, Duke has a chance to move off, too, depending on what happens with other tournament finals. North Carolina. 
That Wisconsin team is awfully good. Time out on the floor. We'll take one as well. We'll be back to this one-point game. What was a five-point Notre Dame lead at the half has been cut to one behind the play of Bryce Johnson. He's been terrific on the inside. He's six for eight on the interior. North Carolina has done an excellent job getting him established early in the first half and to continue through to the second. All right, Debbie, the first two minutes, Notre Dame 0 for 3 on field goals, two turnovers, zero points, and now the three ball. Yeah, they don't, they don't have to match Notre Dame for threes, but they have to keep it close, and then that'll really make their points in the paint. If Marcus Page starts hitting those long-range shots, look out. Carolina's last lead was 19-18. Not the year. Connaughton from long range. Well, and after a quick start, uh, he has gone silent. How about that? Johnson again. My timeout. timeout. Notre Dame. It's a quick start. You see the nice screen inside gives him a look. Marcus Page getting off to a quick start, and then this is this is North Carolina basketball. Justin Jackson, the great look ahead and lob. Wow. Forty-three, thirty-nine, Tar Heels. Nice, Listen. nice time out by Mike, Mike Bray that time. The crowd, did. Carolina, getting ready to go on one of those extended runs, and he wanted to get things calmed down. Well, this building is electric tonight. Jackson says, "I'll take it up by myself." Tokito in full denial. Grant is trying to get the ball out of his hands. He's in a no-help position. Mike, has Grant gotten more passive? Well, I say he's almost by definition has had to, but he gets a look here. Takes it in the paint and he's fouled. Oh, no, a silly foul, too, by Bryce Johnson. That's his second personal foul, and he is lobbying to stay in the game over the bench. So Meeks has three. Now Johnson has two for Carolina. Jackson takes it at the basket. He's fouled. Justin Jackson picks up his second personal. And Roy Williams doesn't like it. I tell you what, Brian Dorsey, this is his first uh, ACC tournament final. Not wanting to hear anything from the Carolina bench. Still belongs to the Irish. Roy Williams won this title, the ACC tournament title, in 2007 and 2008. He's been the runner-up three of the last four. Jared Grant picks up his dribble. Jackson on Meeks. Grant drives it to basket and he's fouled again. This one is on Jackson and that's his third. Justin Jackson has been a difference maker in the semifinals and now in the championship, but he's got three personals. Yeah, nice. Not shooting the ball as well as he has been. Closed captioning for ACC basketball is brought to you by Bojangles' famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time. Jaron Grant makes his second. First points of the second half for Notre Dame. Tim, we're at the 16-27 mark, and that's already the fourth personal or fourth team foul for Carolina, so they're only three away from putting the Irish on the line for the rest of the game. 
Bestory has been doing a nice job on Tokito. Irish extend their defense. Taking that three ball away from Page. Johnson with that hook again. Beautiful two-man game. When he was out on the perimeter, that's where Connaughton can really be effective. But he was able to roll into the post. 11-2 run in the last four and a half minutes. And Johnson putting that hook right in the heart of the Irish. That's going to be knocked out of bounds by Vastoria. 15-17 left in the championship. Carolina, Notre Dame. 45-41, North Carolina has taken the lead. Haviland gave fans the chance to vote for the OLACC first and second team. Take a look at who you, the fans, chose. And Mike, Let's being a legend in this league, how'd they do? Well, South Bend really got active in the voting. <laughs> been Connaughton and Grant, uh, you know, of course, Okafor, a good choice. So Duke fans were active as well. This is Page from beyond the arc. Bottoms. He's hit the last two threes he's attempted. Largest lead of the night for North Carolina. If they, if they start hitting threes combined with their interior presence, it's going to be awfully difficult for Notre Dame to catch up. August banks it in, and he's fouled by James. Joel James picks up his first personal. He, of, the, of the centers, he's going to have real trouble staying in this game. you got to be connected with that double team. And uh, August, beautiful feed inside, and uh, Joel James was caught in between. August now four for five from the line. Brings the lead back to four. Page drives all the way to the basket and he's fouled. Possibility for three three-point plays for Marcus Page. They like to run this screen where you come up in the middle and uh, he just got lost. He gets to that left hand. He is very efficient. Vastoria picks up his second personal. Page tries to make a three-point play the old-fashioned way and does. See, I mean, if you're Vastoria, why even why even wave at that? If, if you're not going to take a hard foul and make put him on the line, just let him go. Don't make it a three-point opportunity. Connaughton has disappeared. Here's August with a jump hook. And the putback by Jackson somehow off the top of the backboard. Wow, is, normally you don't like your uh, point guard on the offensive glass, but uh, the fortunate bounce. Irish sag back into the zone. A very capable three-point shooter and Page has been on fire in this half. Here's Barry. Tokido out jumped everybody. Well he can he can just go up another floor on the elevator from everybody else. Barry for two. You like to talk about the danger zone? I think Notre Dame is in it. Yep, seven points, the crowd riled up. And uh, North, North Carolina's got two guards out there who can make shots. Jared Grant's basket will not count. He was fouled before the shot. Our edge to the game is brought to you by the Principal Financial Group. Points in the paint, big. Yeah, I mean, no surprise there at all. 16 to 21 in the paint field goal. Notre Dame only 7 to 14, but they're more of a perimeter oriented team. Foul was on Tokido, Mike, so the Irish will bring it in. So right now, the Irish are not getting crushed on the boards, which is a big, big statistic for them. But North Carolina shooting at such a high percentage, they haven't had to get many offensive rebounds. They only shot 37% in Chapel Hill. Connaughton and Vestorio on the bench for Notre Dame. Pass 
inside. Colson buries it. That is he step up again. He has been quiet in this game. This is his first basket of the of the ball game. 53-48. But neither August or Collison have a foul in this game, so we might see that combination out there a lot to help offset the rebounding. Carolina 8 for 11 this half. Make it 9 for 12. Barry again. He was 3 of 6 from 3 for the tournament and improves on that. Grant takes it down Main Street and he's fouled hard. That's the seventh team foul. So uh, for the last 12 minutes, Indiana, or, uh, Irish will be at the free throw line. North Carolina trailed at the half, but they turned the page with Marcus. It's 56-48 Tar Heels. This is the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Welcome back inside the 2015 New York Life ACC Tournament. Mike, let's take a look at our Haviland Defensive Shield because the Tar Heels have gotten very defensive and have an eight-point lead. Well, you know, you look at it, we, we talk about North Carolina's offense all the time and getting on the glass, but uh, look at the field goal percentage. Irish shooting it well in the first half, but uh, it's only three of nine. And uh, on the game, you know, North Carolina has 12 more field goal attempts than does Notre Dame. This is a 22 to 9 run by the Tar Heels and Jaron Grant missed his first. Makes the second. Every point now becomes critical. We are under the 12 minute mark in the ACC championship game. UNC very active offensively. Barry penetrates, drops it off for Johnson. I really like this combination of Barry and Page in the backcourt. Not only shooting on the perimeter, but able to make plays inside. Connaughton is still on the bench. Vestoria is still on the bench. The Irish need points and get it from Beecham. Wow, big lift off. Those are the first bench points they've had. Now, he's a capable shooter, 42% from three. Reels him back into six. That's going to be called a hold. Now, a lot of people are going to say, wait a minute, Johnson's arm extended. But the foul was before that. Let's go over to Debbie. Debbie, where are you? I think she's over there on the bench. So Carolina will bring it in with 10.53 to play. And they have to go to the safety valve and throw it way down the other side. Right, and Notre Dame has had to go to the big cover, putting August on Bryce Johnson. Foul is on Vestoria. That's his third. I think Page, he was going to take that shot, then pulled it back at the last second. It became a pump fake. Vestoria was in the air and couldn't stop. Grant staying up with Barry. Now he gets picked off. Jackson for three. Picks. Second chance opportunities. Bryce Johnson with the play. Hicks has all of their points. He's got uh, eight points off the bench. Too big, and there's too many of them. Here's the look in good anticipation. The soft bounce. Notre Dame right there couldn't come up with it, and it cost them two points. Foul is on Barry. That's his second. So Grant at the line and makes the first. He's got 15 points. the 
Grant cheering section. Harvey and Horace. Notre Dame beat Miami. Beat Duke in this tournament. Trying to grab UNC. But right now trailing as we go under 10 minutes. Cage for three. Tickles the twine again. That's pure. Oh, he's been unbelievable. The other three's on the other side of the floor, so a different spot for him, but... Mike Ray in timeout. And with 9.42 to play, Mike Bray takes a 30-second timeout. Let's go back to Debbie Antonelli, Debbie. Well, in the last timeout for Mike Bray, he was as animated as you see him standing up on the sidelines typically. He was in and out of his chair. He was challenging his guys on the defensive end. We have to get three stops. If we can get three consecutive stops, we can get right back in this thing. Let's see if they can get some. They need one before they get three. Well, that's, you know, now it's, they've got to guard the perimeter. They're so concerned about the inside, but uh, Barry and Page have been terrific from the outside. Drop it down to Hicks, his jump hook, and he's fouled by Connaughton. Only the first foul for him, so that's not an issue. The foul is on number 24, and Connaughton is first, 15 foul. Colson will get off the bench. Bonzi will wait to come in after the first free throw. Hicks at the line. He's a 64% free throw shooter. And he makes the first. Mike, you wonder why a guy like Isaiah Hicks, with all that talent, just as all, just averaging six points a game. He's got skills. Yeah, not well, just, you know, there not a lot of touches in the offense for him right now, but uh, his time will come. He's got nine points here today, so above his average. Connaughton gets the rebound. Jackson takes it at the basket. No foul call, but it'll be Notre Dame basketball. Still plenty of time left on the shot clock. Yeah, there was no question. Jackson was trying to get at the line with that drive. Kicks it out. Jackson for three. Yes. Boy, you know Grant is such a he's a he's a dynamic scorer, but he's such a playmaker too, and that's a rare combination. He leads the team with six assists a game. The lead. Here's Vastoria. Yeah, three point what, game. What, did, uh, what, was, what was Deb telling us about three stops? Yep. Right back in it. Mike Bray off the bench comes in like he's playing. Runs halfway down the sideline. Mike's in his defensive stance. Ball's on the ground, 50-50 ball. Possession arrow will blow to the Irish. Now here's the, the drive and the kick out. This is the big part. You see him just take a step back to clear that three-point line. And then the good anticipation by Vasturia, and it gets an easy layup. And then the 50-50 ball, tied up, possession arrow. Notre Dame. To this point, Tim, uh, North Carolina has not been able to run away from Notre Dame. Some good timeouts by Mike Ray and some timely scoring. Grant has it taken away, pushes it back. Grant, they work it around into the corner of Astoria. How about that? What? Four pass, three passes to an open three point shooter. What a possession. Page pushes it right back. Numbers aren't there for Jackson. Kicks it back to Connaughton. Yes, sir! It's an 11-0 run by Notre Dame. Why, these are great follow threes in transition. Anytime you get the steal like that, it's like an offensive rebound. One, two, three. 
That's great offense right there. And then this just knowing where your guy is, the trailer on the three on the fast break. They need to get uh, they needed to get him restarted. And the referees did a nice job cleaning up. I mean, the, about the Irish were so fired up, and the, they were all the way out at half court to meet their guys. Eleven nothing run, and Notre Dame has taken back the lead. Both teams playing well, Mike. Yeah, you see the Irish uh, 43 points from uh, three points and the free throw line. Exactly how their offense is built. Been a game of runs. We saw Carolina go on a big run. Took the lead. Now it's Notre Dame. Take possession just to uh, see the ball go through the hoop. Another turnover. Yeah, we, we talked about how that uh, shooting percentage was down. Well, that's uh, turned dramatically. The Irish have hit their last eight shots. Grant wanted a clear out. He thought he could take Tokyo. -to. They all went to the right side of the court. He's going to do it again. He wants Connaughton over there. He wants this side all to himself. Now he gives it back to Colson, and Colson walks. They got what they wanted, but they turned it over. Notre Dame and North Carolina battling for a championship under seven minutes to go. We'll be back after a word from the ACC stations. And that's exactly what the Irish three-point shooters are doing right now. Jackson outside the arc. Pass up a good shot for a better one. Vasturia in the corner. A steal and an easy deuce. And then off their hustle, Connaughton knocks down a three. He makes an 11-0 run, Irish. August with a steal on Meeks. It was set up by Connaughton. Well, it's August in March. Yeah, their, uh, their defense has been outstanding. Turnovers out front, live ball turnovers to points and three-point shooting. Came up big there. See if the Tar Heels answer. Connaughton comes away with it. Jackson, a nice dig in that time on Bryce Johnson. Gets the turnover. Kick it out. Grant for three. Halfway down. They call this on Meeks? Yeah, foul on Meeks. That's four on Meeks. We talk about the big guy. How about Zach August getting out there? Length of the floor for the slam. Wow. He motors pretty good for a guy 6'10", 250-some pounds. Well, what, what a timeout that must have been by Mike Bray. I was, I'm, I'm going to save that speech and use it for the NCAA tournament sometime. <laughs> they just exploded after that. Mike, you said at the beginning of the game, you thought Notre Dame needed 10 threes to win this game. They're at nine. But, uh, you know, give and give Marcus Page and Joel Berry credit. They came out, they've hit four in this half, so... For them keeping pace. It's a 15 to nothing run. Now the danger zone belongs to the Tar Heels. Page. Nice pass to Tokido. Boy, can he get up and he gets up in a hurry. Yeah, easy rise like that. And great find by Bryce Johnson. Carolina fans coming to their feet. Jackson. 73-66. Now let's, let's see where the uh, fatigue meter is in the last five minutes of the fourth game in four days. Marcus Page steps inside. Vesturia comes away with it. You much prefer to now you got to you've got to jam Marcus Page. You want to make him a two-point shooter for the rest of this game. Donatin looked at it. Well, Jackson's a good defender for him. He's got the length. He can cover out on that jump shot. Grant with a step back. 
Yeah, just not that he was not on balance on that shot, kind of tripped as he was going into it. Jackson feels like he can take Connaughton. He was calling for the ball. Instead, Barry goes right to the basket. And that'll belong to the Irish. Haven't been many second chance opportunities for North Carolina in this stretch. Well, that's why, Mike, you start thinking right now about their legs. You talked about it. Here they are. This is getting long into the tournament now. They've played four games in a row. Yeah, and then Bryce Johnson looked really gassed walking over to the sideline right now. And Roy Williams trying to get him some a break until the under four-minute timeout. Jared Grant kicks it back. Connaughton for three. Bottoms. There's your tenth three. And the largest lead of the game for Notre Dame. Not only that, 10 of 20, though. 50% from three. Ridiculous average. See if UNC can climb back in. This is going to belong to Notre Dame. Looked like Isaiah Hicks hesitated. And got to it too late. Here's that extra kick out. So what Grant is so good at. Content spotting up. Four of five from three. Six of eight overall. And now what they're doing. Anytime where they were playing the post one on one early in this game. Notre Dame doubling now. Digging in. Six turnovers in the last five minutes for North Carolina. As we go under four minutes. Grant. Great follow by August. That black basket was still moving. Well, it, this has been a different Notre Dame team since that timeout that Mike Bray called. Here's a whistle away from the ball, down by the baseline. Timeout on the floor. Three and a half to play. 78-66, Notre Dame over North Carolina. Carolina brings it in, and Carolina's got to manufacture some points here in a hurry. Yeah, this, is a, this is a big possession right now. You've got to have good execution and a good result. Page. Notre Dame on a 24-3 run, Tim. Jumped out on Page nicely, took the three away. Get it back to Tokito. Back to Page. Defended well, Mike. Yeah, and that was a, a tough shot. Contested jump shot. And uh, they cleaned up the boards nicely. The interior scoring has gone away. Caught it in all alone. Uh, Tokito got caught looking into the backfield, Tim. He just he did, he lost track of where Conan was. Back door was wide open. 17 foul for Notre Dame, so it'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation. So Demetrius Jackson. Yeah, he was sneaking up. Conant had been killing him from threes, but that's just too easy. Roy Williams doesn't like it. Mike Bray does. So at the line, Joel Berry, the six-foot freshman from Florida. Early on in this half, uh, he and Page, he gave them a nice lift off the bench. He gets a friendly bounce there. He's a good free throw shooter. 72% for the year. That's the thing with, with, uh, with Notre Dame, they're such a good free throw shooting team. It's tough to play the foul game with them. Right. Good call. Now in the We've got two minutes and 45 seconds left in the championship. That Grant, if Grant is an extra ball handler there, very difficult to press. Gets it across the timeline. Run and jump. They're going to melt some of the clock. Shorten the game. And it causes a turnover. You don't want to get too cautious too early. No, and it's just a risky area to throw that pass. And Jackson tapping him on the chest. He knows he made a mental error right there. Look for that run and jump from North Carolina. 
for the next few possessions, if not the rest of the game. Well, every possession now for the Tar Heels is magnified. The importance is huge. Oh, what a great move by Page. Page with the crossover, breaking ankles and scored two. And timeout with Carolina. Beautiful job of splitting the double team. You see that Bryce going out and August got overextended that time. But still, you know what, uh, I'll still say that you, you Mike Bray, you want, you take Marcus Page as a two-point scorer as opposed to a three-point scorer. This game, this game by no means out of shape right now. Two minutes, plenty of time to cut into a 10-point lead. Absolutely. But, but North Carolina's got to get some stops, especially with a Hall of Fame coach who's won 17 ACC championships. Here's our game summary presented by Valero. Well, Bryce Johnson hasn't scored in a while. He's gone quiet. And Grant has been able to survive those three fouls and stay in the game. Carolina fans taking it up a notch. Notre Dame gets it in, bounds. Full court press by the Tar Heels. Grant picks up his dribble and has to call timeout. You, you can't dribble over. You know that run and jump is coming. You can't dribble into it over in half court, especially over in the corner. You've got to keep the ball in the middle of the floor and have outlets. In the last 30 seconds, Mike, North Carolina has taken away some of the momentum, and they're cutting into the lead. And right now, Roy Williams is thinking the same thing you just said. We still got ten, two minutes to play, no. and it's only a 10-point game. No, no question about it. I mean, this, this game's still very much in, in, in reach for this team, and Notre Dame has got to show some better poise in handling this pressure uh, that, that uh, Carolina's throwing at them. They get off the floor, spread the floor, and start passing it, I guess, huh? All right, we'll see what happens. The Irish bring it in. Grant takes it all the way back again. Got a reason to get some time off the clock. I don't like that rule. And he picks up the dribble again and loses it. And the foul on Grant. And that's his fourth. And North Carolina's in the one and one. The same area of the floor and went, you know, Grant, the, the trouble there, there's the foul just out of frustration. That's his fourth. But picking your dribble up, too, another Cardinal sin. Absolutely. This game has changed. Here come the Tar Heels. Jump ball, possession arrow belongs to North Carolina. Now Mike Bray's not happy about that. He's just trying to get his guys to you know, refocus. It. Right now their body language not great. Even with that run that Notre Dame has, they're standing up straight a little bit. I think they like that lead way too much. Yeah, they're getting a little too, uh, too consumed with the referees at this point too. Here's Page, always dangerous. August comes away with it. He's fouled. I thought a, a couple of questionable shots by Brett that time. Yeah, I agree. The drive and then the deep three. He's young. Nate Britt, the sophomore from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, went to Gonzaga High School. Oak Hill. Notre Dame, 18 of 20 from the free throw line tonight. Well, August had a big game against North Carolina earlier in the year. 18, 18 points, points. Yeah, 6 of 10, 6 of 6 shooting, had the game-winning basket. And makes a key free throw there. And he's been solid from the free throw line, 7 of 8 now. And he came in as a 62% free throw shooter. There's the huge advantage at the line for Notre Dame. He's got 14 points. Lead back to 12. Now time is definitely a factor. Page for three. Timeout, North Carolina. Uh, 
Uh, Marcus Page has been incredible in this second half. 22 points now. The bulk of the three-point shooting. Five of ten now from behind the arc. Ten of his 15 field goal attempts have been threes. And with 70 seconds left, it's a three-possession game. Uh, my screen is right. That was the last time out by North Carolina. You see only one left for uh, for Notre Dame and the Notre Dame in the double bonus. Let's go over to Debbie Antonelli, Debbie. Before the game, when I was with Coach Williams, he said the thing he was mostly concerned about was the three-point shooting of Notre Dame versus his offensive rebounding, which was their strength. So it was strength against strength, and right now North Carolina with 15 second-chance points, Notre Dame with 30 points from outside the arc. Well, the, you know, the thing with North Carolina that you can survive with, it, with no timeouts when you've got a guard like Marcus Page out on the floor. This is where Notre Dame has had its trouble, getting it across the timeline. Jaron Grant pushes this one. They jump him hard, he passed it. And they fouled Jackson. That's what he wasn't doing before, Mike. You called for it. He raced it up across the timeline and got rid of it. Well, here's, here's Jackson at 75%, Grant at 75%, Connaughton at 78%, August 65, but shooting well tonight. So you really don't have a lot of options to who to put on the line. Certainly those numbers may be skewed a little bit when you only have 64 seconds left in a championship game. Pressure then becomes a factor. But Jackson just as smooth as always. But, but the good thing, you don't have to worry about the one and one. You're already in the double bonus, so you know you're getting two from right. here on out. Good point. Jackson has 10 points. Makes them both. Leads back to 11. One Page eight. banks in that left hand. And it's 84-75, but 58.7 seconds left. Notre Dame playing hot potato. Trying to get rid of it before the fouls. Final 45 seconds. Uh, they got 12 seconds off the clock that time. And back to the line. And how about Mike Bray's seniors tonight? Well, when, when I tell you, when when he when Deb talked to him before the game, she asked him specifically about these guys, and he knew that he had a lot of confidence in this year with these guys coming back. Mike, I was out in South Bend on Saturday in their final game, senior day, and they honored those two, and I mean, it was incredible. It was very emotional. And what a call, and Tim misses two. Especially after the passing of Father Hesburgh, it was an emotional day anyway, and then they honored those two. What a day in South Bend. Page again for three, and it's 84-78. Grant, Grant really upset with himself. But his confidence has to be a little shaky right now. It's a six, I mean, a six-point lead, two-possession game. I mean, this is not easy. Either his confidence is shaky or he's so upset with himself he's going to step up and knock these down. Makes the first. All five Notre Dame starters are in double figures. John Madry keeping all the numbers here at courtside. Working along with Freddie Kiger. Makes them both. Wouldn't be a championship without those two. Page, stop and go into the corner. Time ticking away. Johnson slams it down. 86-80. 26.1 left. And they foul Grant again. So Nate Britt fouls him immediately. You know, the question, you know, Notre Dame has had an unbelievable year, and this will set a record for victories in a year. Absolutely. But uh, the, the question, we, we knew that they could score well enough to make a deep run in the tournament. The question is, can they defend and rebound? 
Mike Bray was telling us how he's so confident with this team and that the team's confidence makes him feel better before every game regardless of who the opponent is. Well, what a what a lift getting uh, Mr. Grant back this year after uh, his academic issues last year. And again, it's Jackson. 13.5 seconds. They're going to run out of time. And they foul Grant with 12.6. Notre Dame is going to get its 29th win of the year. And the number three seed, ranked number 11 in the country, is going to move on and, as you say, will improve their seed in the big tournament. How about this? The first championship they've ever had in any conference ever in 108 years in basketball. Absolutely. That's, it's, that's huge. Now, he did make a good point, Mike Bray, when he told us they were independent for a long time. Yep. But still, 18 years in the Big East, and they never got to the tournament final there. Grant pushes the lead back. And the final 10 seconds. Carolina still battling. Get out, Pat. Jackson again. That'll do it. Notre Dame is the ACC champion for 2015. And Tobacco Road now spreads to the Midwest. Played in the NCAA tournament 31 times, which is ninth all time. They went to the Final Four in 1978, but this is their first ever conference champion. And it came in 2015. Mike Gray and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame beat North Carolina 90 to 82.